call to order. This is the fifth regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And at this time, as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you. Each time someone stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren. Here. Bauk. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Versi. Here. And Wangeman. Here. 16 present. We have a quorum, full house tonight. Uh, now if we can all stand and Alderman Decker will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jeremy. Looking for approval of the minutes of the of the uh, prior Common Council meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Confirmation of appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> got uh, two letters regarding uh, county appointments to couple of different city committees. The City County Shared Services Committee appointments. Uh, the county is pleased to advise they appointed the following county board supervisors serve on the City County Shared Services Committee for the 2010-2012 board term. Mick Annick, Keith Abler, and Peggy Fighter. Motion to file. Second. Accept. Motion to. Accept and file. Accept and file. Confirm. Motion to confirm. Uh, do we have to confirm their appointments? I think so. Yes. Yep, okay, then motion to confirm. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm the appointments. Under discussion, there is none. Roll call, please. Warren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. And Wangeman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, more appointments, Attorney McLean? The last one is uh, reappointing Supervisor Val Schultz to serve as Sheboygan County's representative on the Marina and Harbor Committee. Motion to confirm. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. And Boron. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Public forum this evening. Okay. All right, this evening, first on the list is Dulcie Johnson, if you'd like to come up, please. <sighs> Dulcie, <coughs> can I get your home address? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. <clears throat> Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richard, City Attorney McLean, members of the Council and citizens. On May 3rd, the Council received a document outlining five scenarios for the Fire Department and the Ambulance Service. The Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee has voted to support Scenario D, which calls for five stations with ambulance system growth and 73 firefighters. The potential revenue analysis for local transport shows revenues ranging from $40,000 to $200,000, depending on the share that the fire department would get of the local transport market. Currently, there are 69 firefighters on the payroll. The cost of four new hires is stated to be $240,000. This would mean a loss or a cost to the taxpayer of $40,000 to $200,000 under Scenario D. Scenario A calls for five stations, no ambulance, and 67 firefighters. So the current roster could be reduced by two, resulting in a budget savings of approximately $150,000. Thus, using ambulance accounting methods, one would say that the city would save $390,000 by adopting the five stations, no ambulance scenario. 
Chief Herman has stated that the current system with Orange Cross offering dual systems services is the best possible system. He has also said that he needs Orange Cross for backup. Yet he persists with plans to take more business away from Orange Cross. If the, fire department if the fire department expands to the point where Orange Cross can no longer afford to stay in business and Chief Herman loses his backup, the city will lose the best possible system and Chief Herman will have realized his goal <clears throat> that Orange Cross will fold, the fire department can take over the entire Sheboygan area and hire 12 additional firefighters as Mr. Herman wrote in the Wisconsin Professional Firefighters Journal in 2007. Every time the fire department hires another person, they per hire a person with not enough to do. You can call them a firefighter, a paramedic, or a firefighter paramedic. The result is the same. One more person with not enough to do, retiring at an early age and receiving 100% taxpayer retirement benefits for 20 or 30 years. In 2010, Sheboygan taxpayers will contribute over $2 million for retirement and health benefits just for the fire and police departments. At the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, Alderman Geisha spoke about his concern that Orange Cross, which is owned by Aurora and St. Nicholas, does not pay any taxes in Sheboygan because they are nonprofit entities. However, they do employ 2,000 people, many of whom undoubtedly live in Sheboygan and pay taxes. We must also note that half of the Sheboygan firefighters do not pay any taxes in Sheboygan because they do not live in the city. But we pay them very generous salaries and benefits and retirement pay for years and years. I have read the Greater Sheboygan Committee's white paper on the fire department, which raises many valid points that must be seriously considered in determining the future course of the department. The document speaks to the emotional issues such as we are witnessing now when deciding public protection and suggests that more hard data should be available before making decisions about the necessary level of protection. Another important point that the council must not lose sight of is the continued growth of salaries and benefits for fire department employees which will be a big factor in future budgets. The document also supports including all costs when analyzing the operation of the ambulance service and suggests that in doing so, the result might be that the ambulance service makes no actual contribution to the city coffers. On Wednesday, May 26, the fire department transported a patient to Milwaukee for Dr. Coolis. Inasmuch as the department, per council directive, is allowed to run only two ambulances, I was concerned that that may have left only one ambulance in service in the city. <clears throat> I called Deputy Chief Butler, who was very defensive, and rebuked me for calling him so often, saying that my calls were getting a little long in the tooth. I pointed out to Deputy Chief Butler that I am a citizen, I have a right to ask questions, and further that this was only my second contact with him. I met with him in his office on May 4th about an emergency medical situation involving a passenger on a city bus at 4th and Michigan when a backup bus arrived before the ambulance. Mr. Butler told me that he did not know how many ambulances were available the day of the Milwaukee transport because he was not the shift commander. But interestingly, he did know that the department did not call in any overtime. The question remains, was the department short-staffed during the transport to Milwaukee? <clears throat> Alderman Hanna has introduced a document again calling for lifting the hiring freeze to hire four firefighter paramedics. It seems that Chief Herman has somehow magically found funds in his 2010 budget so that a transfer from the general fund will not be required. I thought that the council had passed a bare bones budget for 2010. Thus, I am struggling to understand how the fire department suddenly has so much money available. Excuse me, Dulce, would you like your extra minute? Please. Motion to approve the extra minute. <clears throat> Second. Two months ago, Chief Herman was so concerned about running out of overtime money that he closed one station. Will spending these funds now result in requests from the fire department for transfers from the general fund later in the year? And giving a, given a $1.5 million deficit, where will the council find the funds in 2011 for another $240,000 in salaries and benefits for the fire department, which scenario may also result in a loss of $200,000? I have been told that the fire union has offered to give back $100,000 if the council hires the four firefighter paramedics. The $100,000 is a one-time deal. The $240,000 will grow every year for 20 or 30 years. Anyone who would buy into such a deal needs to take a refresher course in simple arithmetic. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dulcie. Next. Next on the list is Eldenburg. 
Eldon, if you could come up to the front, please. Eldon, can I have your home address? I live in the first district, 406 Clement <laughs> Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Wait a minute, the clapping needs to lower. 406, right? 406, correct. Uh, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Sue, Mayor Ryan, Steve, and council members. Uh, tonight I'm here as a spokesperson for the Greater Sheboygan Committee. Uh, uh, Dulcie has already spoke about our white paper, and uh, I'd like to acquaint you with the Greater Sheboygan Committee Be briefly. We are a registered political action committee that is primarily interested in local, municipal, and county politics. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a copy of our white paper, you can find it on our website, www.greatersheboygan.org. Uh, tonight, I trust you'll have much discussion about firefighters, paramedics, fire stations, fire trucks, and ambulances. In many ways, however, this is as much about assuring the community that our fire and emergency medical services are provided in an efficient, cost-effective fashion based upon objective evaluation and reflective of the best political practices. You know, there are a few policy decisions that have aroused as much discussion and dissension as the decision to offer ambulance services. Reading the comments from the, web, the press website, it now seems that the fire services have become the department that we love to hate. It is the policy that established the service, the speed with which it is implemented, and the manner of cost allocation that has raised this ire. Not the quality of the emergency medical services provided or the dedication and abilities of our firefighters. This decision continues to resonate throughout the community and is now polarized and is clouded by emotion rather than rational discourse. The recent financial evaluation of the, of the fire department services provides a good starting point for a top to bottom analysis of the department. Additionally, our white paper suggests that there are a number of operational alternatives and performance criterion that should be objectively evaluated as part of the planning for the future. You know, some years back, I took a walk with old Wangaman out of City Hall, and he noted that if you look closely at the fire station on 9th Avenue in New York, you'll see a bricked up opening where the second story fire escape is, and that's where they used to lift and store the hay to feed the horses. Something about Sheboygan politics suggests that the change from horse-drawn to motorized did not come easy. I trust that there were concerns about response time, reliability, can we reduce the number of firefighters if we modernize, there may have even been a 10-year pro forma evaluating the cost of oats and horses versus that of, uh, of gas and, uh, and trucks. Uh, change does not come easy, especially for an organization like the fire department where staffing levels and organizational structure has been in place for many years. Our economic downturn, however, requires a new look at all government operations. As our report notes, we are concerned over the Sheboygan Fire Department's management's reluctance to think outside of the station and consider the efficacy of other organizational structures. You know, it may very well be that the current delivery system represents the best and most cost-effective and efficient services available. But how would you know unless you diligently explore all the options? Fire Department financial analysis identifies long-term systemic costs, and it is unlikely that, pro that projected cost increases will be offset by ambulance revenues, an increase in state aid, or growth in our tax base. Rather than providing a short-term fix for a long-term problem, please take the time to get it right. For example, immediately authorizing the, hi the hiring of four firefighters paramedic uh, this evening will not provide an immediate solution. Two fire chiefs ago, I asked how long it would take from the decision to hire a recruit until having a fully functioning firefighter. The chief at that time said it would be from four to six months. A one week delay in this process to allow the committee of the whole the opportunity to review and evaluate that staffing proposal and the alternative scenarios, if nothing else, offers the community the opportunity to hear a more detailed explanation and I trust a spirited debate on this issue. In closing, 
you have the opportunity to use the current municipal, the current situation as a model for the detailed study of all municipal operations. Clearly, the firefighters are stakeholders in this process, and their input will be most valuable. However, the packaging of the ambulance service raises lingering doubts about the accuracy of their projections, and the performance to date has not inspired or restored the public confidence in their planning process. For this purpose, we suggest that an outside consultant would be a valuable adjunct to an independent review panel that consider all voices and get it right based upon mutually agreed upon objective criteria. Eldon, would you like the additional minute? Uh, if I could. Motion to approve. Second. Yeah. Go ahead. One last thing. You know, it's probably been 100 years since the city had a stable of horses. But even today, as taxpayers, we're still buying the hay for the municipality. Uh, once digested, as alderman, your job is to deal with the byproducts. Uh, that's all I have to say. Can I donate the rest of my time? I'd like to give half to Alderman Gisha and the other half to Alderman Boren. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Eldon. Thank you, Eldon, and, uh, and I, I don't uh, mean to comment on your, on your uh, uh, speech here, uh, but uh, uh, taking the, the anonymous blogs as the... As the uh, the, the uh, mood of the community, I think, is unfair to the fire department. All right, next on the list is Richard Hartman. Richard, if you could come up to the front, please. <coughs> Richard, can I have your home address, please? 2423 North 23rd Street right here in Sheboygan. All right, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> what I have to say tonight is information that has been funneled to me from various sources. I believe the information to be very interesting and worthy of passing along to the great many of who have only heard one side of the issue. To begin with, it appears a vote may be taken on the issue of how many fire stations the city wants to maintain, along with the simultaneously operation of ambulance service by the Sheboygan Fire Department. As I understand it, a vote to do this only requires a simple majority. Should such a proposal get the needed votes, a follow-up consideration must be addressed as to how, the, the, how to staff the added positions needed to keep the five fire stations open. Up until very recently, it was understood that a hiring freeze would have to be lifted, with the greater concern now being how to pay for the added employees, and that would require a two-thirds majority vote by the council. The latest to be heard is that Chief Herman has found enough money in his budget to fund the added employees for the remainder of the year. This presents the possibility that only a simple majority is needed due to the fact that no extra money is needed, that is, until next year. We have been told numerous times that the next few years could be more difficult to deal with financially than the, fa than the past few. And now the proposal is to increase our financial, our fiscal responsibilities when the direct opposite is needed. Most of us, and that includes members of the council, have had to make adjustments in our private lives in order to cope with the economy as it is and will be in the future. And it's troublesome when so many of our aldermen fail to make the same adjustments when spending the taxpayers' money. We have become a society of, en society of entitlement, but the problem with entitlement often comes at the expense of those less demanding. In other words, if you feel you must have something, fine. But don't ask other people to pay for it. We often compare ourselves to other cities of equal size when addressing issues that come up. But that does not seem to be the case when it comes to the number of fire stations staffed 
for the area to be served. In order to be on par with those other comparable cities, we need just three stations. There has never been a quarrel with the service rendered by the Sheboygan Fire Department when it comes to fire protection. Nor have there ever been problems with Orange Cross providing us with am ambulance service. Why are we messing with a proven system that if all the data became evident would prove to be in the best interests of the people? Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Next. Uh, next on the list is Carter Paulus. Carter, if you could come on up. <coughs> and can I have your home address, Carter? So my home address is 414 Erie Avenue. And thank you, Mayor and Common Council and all assembled. Before I start, I can't tell you what a pleasure it was to hear our City Clerk announced the theme of tonight's meeting. Each time someone stands up for an ideal, and I happen to be an idealist, or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And boy, that's my theme, hope. So based on all of that, the Sheboygan Fire Department is pulling out all of the stops, and it seems like it is all or nothing for them. That aside, we firmly believe that we are right in our conviction that this entire process of the Sheboygan Fire Department taking over the city ambulance service from Orange Cross was and is wrong. It goes against the grain of our American principles when government interferes with any commerce for the sole benefit and aggrandizement of government and not the public. We have set ourselves up since our inception as a country with supporting religious and benevolent organizations such as churches <coughs> and hospitals and other service entities as tax exempt in our society. And Sheboygan government is wrong to condemn or use that as an excuse for the actions and words of some of the aldermen to support the Sheboygan Fire Department. This attitude by this government is why I have steadfastly been against the takeover of the ambulance service for the last four years. It's a moral issue. One underlying goal seems to be elimination of tax exemptions in favor of more tax revenue, with recent elimination of tax exemptions from about a dozen entities. Perhaps city government would be happier if all the churches and hospitals would just shut down and go away. But that isn't going to happen. The citizenry is not fooled by this common council or its aldermen or anyone else paying lip service to this fact. The only conclusion left is it's time you cease this unacceptable behavior and conduct yourselves responsibly for the citizens of our community as quite simply in this you are wrong. Now, the Greater Sheboygan Committee, which represents the economic strength of this community, has presented rationally excellent ideas regarding the ambulance service for you all to consider. Shut down the ambulance service and rethink the Sheboygan Fire Department into a better and less wasteful service than what you presently have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carter. Thank you, Carter. Next. Um, last on the list would be Susie Lassard. Susie, can I get your home address, please? Yes, it's 5016 Manning Road, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <clears throat> and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor, Council, City Attorney, and City Clerk, 
Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I will not bring you numbers that have been misconstrued. I will not bring you regrets of budget that our council has already approved. And I will not bring you a voice that's standing alone. I will bring to you the sentiment of your collective constituents. Over a thousand signatures have been submitted to this council, as well as 30 business owners to date. The City of Sheboygan's Fire De Department is a department of professionals, which does an incredible job. The department that has given back to this community, not only in contract negotiations, but in the job that they do. Our police and fire department save lives, buildings, educate our community through youth and adults. They put their lives on the line each and every day they go to work. They do all this to provide us a safe living environment for each and every one of us in the city of Sheboygan. Over the past two and a half years, our fire department has not received one complaint. The quality of their service to this city is flawless. Fortunately, we have not had the catastrophe in our fine city that compares to the devastation of 911. We, however, we do have the potential in this city with two chemical plants, a power plant, large factories, large manufactured homes and apartment communities, as well as homes in neighborhoods that sit only five feet apart. It is my concern, as well as others, <clears throat> to the time it currently takes for our fire department and ambulance services to reach my home and that of the other residents in District 5 and soon to be other districts in our city. What used to be a life-saving margin has been greatly increased to a life and death time frame. Three minutes to now eight minutes is unacceptable. For the first time in Sheboygan history, our fire chief has worked 24-hour shift and has done so because of depleted overtime and staffing constrictions. As a taxpayer and a resident of the city that is speaking in partnership with the voices of over a thousand plus signatures and more coming in daily, it has come to light that a few aldermen may impose a three-man hold on the vote this evening. Rethink this effort. Acting now on this issue will not only save the city money, but ensure the safety of our city. Please listen to the majority of your constituents. As there is a liability to the city, as we defer from the plan in place with the state, insufficient staffing prevents utilizing the three ambulance that our plan with the state requires. Aldermen, do not allow our city to be open to this liability and that of putting your citizens at risk. Why some members of the council feel that my life and the lives of others are not important. I have been told the money is there. If it is not there, it's your job to find it. Public safety should be the first thing on the council to-do list. A city that is united is what we should all strive for. A <clears throat> excuse me. For those who do not feel it's important to maintain our safety, then it will be you that can shut the lights off when we all leave. Those that have spoken before me have not come to you with over a thousand signatures. Obtaining these signatures was not an effort. The people want the fire stations fully manned and the ambulance service, which is income producing. What is an effort? Is trying to understand a handful of aldermen that appear to be representing their personal agenda and not that of the majority of the people who are taxpayers and paying the bills. I want to thank you all for the hard work you have done and all the hard work you are about to do. Remembering your oath when you entered into office. And remember, it's the taxpayers who own this city. We want it to be safe. We want our city to flourish. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Susie. That will be it. That's all for public forum. Uh, next comes uh, mayor's announcements. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, two of our council members, two of our aldermen, uh, uh, Alderman Eric Rindfleisch and Alderman Don Hammond, uh, both within the last two weeks, both had, uh, had uh, daughters. Uh, <laughs> last, week, last week, Alderman Rindfleisch had a daughter named Isabel, and uh, this Saturday, which is, why, uh, which is why Alderman Hammond looks a little under the weather, had a daughter named Brooklyn. So congratulations to both of you. Um, I'd like to review, uh, give people some time to pre-plan uh, the 4th of July this year and the 4th of July activities. 
Uh, we've made the, we made the decision actually over a year ago uh, to hold the fireworks on the 3rd of July, which is a Saturday. Uh, that would, therefore, the parade and everything will be there. But uh, just going down the uh, uh, Fourth of July uh, weekend activities, uh, on Wednesday, June 30th, the Sheboygan Pops will be playing uh, at, the, uh, at Fountain Park, uh, playing Independence Day-type uh, patriotic music. Uh, Friday, July 2nd, the Jerry Schneider Band, which is a uh, uh, band that does polkas and waltzes and everything else, uh, will be... Uh, We'll be playing at Fountain Park, and that will be Friday at 6.30 p.m., a free show. Uh, that evening after dark, the Venetian Boat Parade on Friday evening. Uh, Saturday, July 3rd, will be the Freedom Run, uh, beginning at the uh, YMCA on the lakefront. Uh, to register, uh, that, uh, you can register online at www.stnicholashospital.org slash Freedom Run. Uh, the parade will, beginning, will begin at 9 o'clock a.m. We'll take the uh, traditional parade route, which I believe is up 7th Street uh, to Michigan Avenue and down Broughton Drive. Uh, that will be on, uh, on, uh, at 9 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, the Art Armada, uh, also known as the Cardboard Boat Regatta, I believe, earlier, uh, will be that afternoon. Uh, and then all evening activities will be at Deland Park. We will not have anything on South Pier. Everything will be at Deland Park this year. Uh, and uh, the Groove Hogs will be playing from 1230 to 330, Bay City Swing from 4 to 630, and the Screaming Cucumbers from 7 to 11. Uh, we will also have... <laughs> Screaming Cucumbers, Screaming Cucumbers, 7 to 11. Uh, breaking during the fireworks, which again is sponsored by our friends at Johnsonville, the Stayer family, so we appreciate that. Um, Sheboygan Theater Company will have a, at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, on July 4th, the We the People. Uh, it's a, a free uh, patriotic musical that they will hold. So everybody, the 4th of July this year, most things are happening on the 3rd of July. We thought it would be better to do it on Saturday the 3rd is to not interfere with uh, Sunday morning services, et cetera. And besides that, it gives everybody then two days to recuperate, I believe. So that's, uh, that's 4th of July activities. Uh, this is Bike and Walk to Work Week. Yes. And I would like uh, Vice President Kittleson to cover that, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, as the chairman of the city's wellness committee, thanks for giving me the opportunity to just to uh, mention Bike and Walk to Work Week. Today was a beautiful day to get started. Uh, uh, we were, I was at the commuter station at uh, 630 this morning, along with Jack Vanderweel and Tracy Holton from Building Inspection. And Lori Serkey came from uh, Finance. So we had a nice showing for our city people. There were a lot of people who were biking and stopping for uh, coffee, and, uh, and uh, we had uh, some other treats there, fruit and, and water. And uh, it was, a, as I said, a great start. So we're, we'll be doing this all week long, Bike and Walk to Work Week. Tomorrow we're at Sheboygan, at Sheboygan Falls, the commuter station. Uh, Wednesday, need public library. So anyone who'd like to uh, walk on over there, walking into work would be a great way to uh, to help us along, and, and then Thursday, they're at the Exchange Bank Coffee House in Plymouth, and then Friday at uh, Joe Johnson Bakery. So uh, that, uh, that uh, will conclude, and then Friday evening will be a, the end of the week celebration. But we'd encourage all of our employees to please participate. Uh, wonderful to have your participation. We have that plaque on the wall over there, and we'd like to keep it there for the third year in a row. So uh, if our city people can get out and uh, buy, uh, bike and walk uh, and then record the results, you can read uh, your, the more, for more info and mileage tracking, you can do that right online this year. So that's a, a great way to make sure that you uh, do, track whatever you've done. Um, and if you don't care to do that, you can record on the back of a piece of paper, turn it into our HR department, and we'll track that mileage for you. So uh, thank you for your participation. And I'll remind everybody we do have a standing bet with the uh, boy mayor up in yes. Manitowoc and, uh, and, his, and his city workers. So he might be less than half everybody's age, but I think we can beat him. Okay, moving on. I am looking for somebody to make a motion to pull forward uh, documents number 552 and 553. President Gisha. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to pull those forward. Any opposition? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? They are pulled forward. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move that the resolution uh, so titled in packet 552 and 553 be put upon their passage. Second. 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 
We have a motion and a second under discussion, President Gisha. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I, what you have here are the two bond documents that were discussed at previous meetings. The city has uh, uh, one, the smaller number, is for our capital improvement program, which was passed by this council. The other is a refinance of several previous bond issues. We have uh, included in there several TIFs and a refinance of our unfunded pension liability, which we previously had with the state trust. So uh, we uh, are very pleased to announce the rates, uh, the Sheboygan's bond rating is remaining at <coughs> AA2 uh, under the current economic conditions. That's fairly remarkable. Uh, we received a very good rating from Moody uh, Investment Services as well as some um, talking points regarding why Sheboygan is, uh, is deserving of that rating. Uh, secondly, the end result of all this refinance is just a, a tad over $1 million of taxpayer money that won't go to pay debt service on bonds. Uh, we had great success in, in those interested in purchasing our bonds because of our Moody's rating and, uh, and uh, had a conference via, with the Moody's representative, with the mayor, our bond rep, and uh, Nancy Buss, then Director Hansen, and uh, we're happy to have the bond rating we have. We're going to have lower interest rates than we had before, resulting in a million dollar difference. And uh, that's significant when you look at our overall budget. So uh, I want to thank the mayor and uh, our bond uh, folks uh, from Ehlers for their help and the other members of the community uh, who put this through. Thank you, President Gisha. Yeah, if I may comment, we were very fortunate, and I would like to open up the microphone to uh, uh, Phil Cosson here, uh, who is our bond rep from, uh, from Ehlers. Um, we had estimated that we would save $615,000 uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the larger uh, bond issue. Um, and we were fortunate enough with, uh, with maintaining our bond rating and uh, with the timing um, that we are saving over $878,000 over the next 17 years on that from where we were. So that's, uh, that's quite the accomplishment. Uh, we did make a decision to change uh, bond companies and we did go with Ehlers, and I think we made the right move because we've, uh, overall, as President Kisha said, we've saved uh, uh, over a million dollars over the next 17 years. So, Motion uh, to open the floor to Phil Cosson from Ehlers and Associates. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Phil. Great. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council members. Appreciate it. Introduction, maybe first. I'm Phil Cosson with Ehlers and Associates, and I know some of the members of the Finance Committee now uh, as you heard, we had a very successful bond sale today. And I know you have a very long agenda. I'm going to try to keep this relatively condensed. Uh, you should have received at home this document called an official statement. I see the heads nodding. That's a good thing. Uh, that document is what we use then to sell bonds in the marketplace. And we took bids today at 10 o'clock, which led to the savings that you just heard about. I just wanted to highlight a few things. In the packet uh, prior to the meeting, I handed out, it looks like this, as sale results on the top. In that packet, you'll see a number of items. One is the Moody's rating report. And again, you've been affirmed at a double A2, which is a very strong rating. Uh, and you should feel uh, very, very good about that rating. It's, it's really a statement to the financial operations of the city, the, facts that, the fact that you're a very diverse uh, and a very, have a very diverse tax base. Uh, but then in there also is the bid tabulation uh, that was received today. Both issues, and there are two separate issues, one was refinancing existing debt and the other to finance your 2010 capital projects. Both issues uh, were awarded to, if you uh, approve tonight, to Wells Fargo, uh, who was the low bid in both cases. Uh, the cover bid in both cases was m and Bank out of Milwaukee. And we also received bids from numerous other banks and financial institutions around the Midwest. So six bids received for one issue, seven bids uh, for the other issue uh, was, were received today. Uh, the financing, the refinancing of the $8.3 million refinancing, again, led to a savings of about $878,000. That's not just the general fund, it goes to pay back the unfunded pension liability 
It's a couple of the tax increment districts that you have in play right now, the environmental TIF, TID 10, and TID 12. Uh, will all realize a portion of that savings. And then it also finances your 2010 capital projects. So again, just in quick summary, uh, we were very pleased with the sale results. We had a lot of interest, uh, primarily Midwestern firms. Rates came in somewhere around 50, about a half a percent, 50 basis points less than what we projected. The net result again is the savings that you've, you've heard about. And uh, we feel very uh, good about the future going forward, that you have a plan in place for how to deal with some of the financial issues going forward. Anytime you can pay a little bit less in debt service, it helps as well. So questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Phil. Do we have any questions for Alderman Hanna? First off, uh, I served as finance chair for a couple of years. Uh, Alderman Gishin's been for a couple of years, and I'm, I'm so thrilled that you finally went down to one rating agency. I always felt that that was a huge waste of money, mm -hmm. and, and I commend by the fact that it's the first time we received information up front at home. I thought that was marvelous. I read through the documents, uh, so really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will say that the decision to go to one rating agency wasn't mine alone. We, we talked about it. Terry Hansen was instrumental in, in making that happen as well. So. Thank you. And, and going down to one rating agency also saved money on top of it. Sure That's correct. Any other questions for Mr. Cassidy? <clears throat> Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Do we have, we have a motion and a second on the floor? We do. Any further discussion? We just need to take each one separately, Jim. Certainly. Okay. So, so if we could just vote on um, 552 first. That'd so be fine. we will Thank you. first do a roll call vote on 552. Sue? Bowers? Yes. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montmayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, Your Honor, I move that uh, document 553 uh, be put upon its passage. Second. Please. Motion and a second on 553 under Aye. discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Consent agenda. President Kisha. Your Honor, I move to accept and file all reports of officers. Sorry about that. We are going to take about a 30 second break here and do some signing with uh, Phil Casson before we move Bond forward. signing. Yeah. We might want to sign it. Y'all can take a breather, but remember your microphones are active. Phil's from Sheboygan originally. Yes, and Phil is a Sheboygan native, by the way. So. <laughs> south High School also. <laughs> Had I known it was South. <laughs> <laughs> 
We won't, we won't hold it against him. <laughs> President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Once again, I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I had a couple calls, Mayor, on document number on the consent agenda 5 4 and 5 15 regarding the sale of that property over at 936 Erie. And I know I talked to you about it this morning. Maybe you could fill the public in on how that ended up to be a win for the city? Sure. Um, 936 Erie Avenue is the former uh, body shop property. It was the old church converted into the body shop, uh, which burnt down. Uh, that property was listed for, I believe, $19,000, somewhere in that range, $20,000, uh, which was, uh, I believe, the assessed value on the dirt. Um, the property itself, uh, as far as uh, value and uh, future development value, is negligible. Uh, when you go with uh, current codes and you do 10-foot setbacks, uh, that property, the end result is you have something uh, between a large doghouse and a small shed in the middle of the property. So um, selling that property uh, and developing that property in the future was not a, uh, not a, not, uh, uh, a likely option for that property. Uh, we had the opportunity to make an offer on the property for the city. Uh, we made a reasonable offer. And it just so happened that the owner of that property also owned another property with a landlocked uh, small city parcel um, adjacent to his property that he could use for parking. So I believe the net uh, on it was we ended up $1,000 in the black from the cost of the one property, which we offered him, I believe, what was it, 8500 was it 8,500 for, for the property on, on 9th and, and 10th, 10th and Erie? Uh, and we sold the other property for somewhere around $1,000 more. So we ended up with a net gain. We got rid of a landlocked piece of property that really had no value. The idea on the property of the, uh, for the property on 9th and Erie is to make that uh, a neighborhood garden for the Gateway neighborhood. Uh, we, as you know, we started the revitalization drive this weekend. We have now 55 facade grants that are going out to the Gateway neighborhood, $5,000 each contractor uh, facade grants to help improve homes. Uh, we got uh, over 200 people out in the neighborhood this weekend uh, to begin the cleanup in the neighborhood. It's a, uh, it is a concerted effort with uh, many groups involved, including uh, the mayor's office, uh, several aldermen, uh, um, city development, city planning, building inspection, fire department, police department, uh, you name it in the city we're involved. We have some faith-based organizations uh, working under the umbrella of uh, Love Your City. Um, we also have Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride. We have the Neighbors Against Drugs groups. Uh, everybody going into this neighborhood uh, to, to uh, get the neighborhood on its feet. Uh, we are uh, looking to start a community center in the neighborhood. Uh, we have, I believe, over 50 people signed up to be part of the Neighborhood Association uh, this weekend. After the cleanup, we had a, uh, had a block party. Um, and the idea of this property is to erect a sign that will say uh, Sheboygan's Gateway Neighborhood. Um, have the Neighborhood Association uh, beautify the property, uh, whether it be with uh, uh, landscaping, uh, flowers, trees, whatever they want. Also, we're going to uh, have a message board uh, on that property to post neighborhood happenings, uh, events in the neighborhood. Uh, so it's a, it's a net win for the city, and it's a big win for the Gateway neighborhood. And it will look a heck of a lot better than a vacant property to have a beautified property with a Gateway neighborhood, uh, Gateway neighbor, Gateway neighborhood sign. So does anybody need any further explanation? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, moving on in the consent agenda to document number 5-6, and that is a, a preliminary resolution declaring intent to exercise police power to levy special assessments for the reconstruction of South 18th Street from Washington Avenue to South Line of Fox Hill Road, and that document comes in with my name on it, and that's fine, but out of all those properties in that area where the reconstruction is going to be, I have three properties that are of my in, in my district. I talked to Alderman Rinfleisch about this last night, and uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to uh, Don for obvious reasons, 
but uh, Alderman Rindfleisch thought it would be a good idea to add the Alderman from the 5th District onto that document because when the reassessment notices come out, they're going to be getting most of the phone calls. <laughs> and, uh, but I agreed, I agreed with, uh, with Alderman Rindfleisch that I would take my share of calls. I understand under the circumstances, he and Alderman, uh, Alderman Hammond are going to have their hands full in more than one way, so I, I would be willing to take the calls, but uh, they should probably take a few. So if we could just revise that document to add those two, Alderman, I would appreciate it. That would be fine. Thank you. We don't need a vote on that. We can just no. add. Does anybody not want to be on that document? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're on. I, I kind of oh. like the document the way it is. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, thank you again, Alderman Boren. That is revised. Uh, Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, if we could vote separately on 5 4 and 5 15, I need to abstain. Okay, 5 4, which is the property on. And 515. Okay. Any further discussion? We have Alderman Versi. You, uh, you question? That was my same Very question. Good. You got okay, it. Okay, so we are going to do uh, 5 1 through 5 3, and uh, 5 5 through 5 14, and 5 16 on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Warren. Aye. Boke. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, now we will take 5 4 and 5 15 as a separate vote. Roll call, please. Uh, do you want to do them together or should we just separate? Does anybody want to do those separately? We can do them together. We can do them together. That's fine. 5 4 and 5 15. Okay. And the first one, 5 4, would be to accept and file, and the res be passed. We need a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. And the second one would be um, to accept and adopt, and the res be passed. So moved. Second. We have another motion and a second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Abstain. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ver I'm sorry, Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Uh, five seven, communications and petitions, 517 through 525 to be referred. Alderman Bourne. Thank you again, uh, Mayor Ryan. On document number 517, uh, that is to go to public protection and safety, and it lists on the agenda salary and grievances uh, that should not go to salary and grievances. It should go to strategic fiscal planning. That's what I, what's I, rec which I, what I recommended. And then I also, I also have a question on document number 523. Obviously, I didn't expect to see all of those petitions, those 1,002 names. But if I recollect, and this is a question for, for, for you, Sue, if I remember back in, I think it was 05 or 06, when station number five was being built, I believe there was a petition of well over 2,000 citizens that were not in favor of that fire station being built. And I'm wondering if you would still have those petitions in your heirlooms or in wherever you keep them, possibly would keep them, because I think it would be interesting to cross-check those signatures with some of the signatures that we just got on this petition. Does well, that, do they still exist or not? Sure, if it was brought in as a council document, we have it. So okay. we can So look I it would up. just have to find, come up with the official date or could you find it? Well, we could probably find it. Okay. And it was a document to not build the fire station, wasn't right. it? Right, station that was a document, I believe there was well over 2,000 signatures uh, of the residents of the South Side and citywide that did not one station five built, and I just, if it's available, I'd like to cross check some of the signatures. Thank you. And that, that could be brought to uh, public protection and safety, obviously, for the discussion. Okay, so we are on to reports of officers two, 5 26. 
by the Assistant City Attorney submitting a memo in support of the recommendations of the Law and Licensing Committee in the matter of the quasi-judicial hearing to determine whether or not to renew Class B alcohol beverage license number 1808 held by Second Home LLC Anthony Kruger agent shall be upheld. Um, I am looking for a motion to uh, pull forward uh, along with this document 5-69, 5-79, and 5-59. Do I have a motion? So say, it, say it again, 59. 569, 579, 69. and 559, all dealing with the same case. Okay. We have a motion, do we have a second on that? Second. Motion and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Okay, now according to our house expert, uh, the nuts and bolts of the city, city clerk Sue Richards, uh, we are first to uh, take 5-59, which is 5-59 by Alderman Rinfleisch authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special outside legal counsel regarding the non-renewal of Class B alcohol beverage license number 2203, Skybox Sports Pub, and Class B alcohol beverage license number 1808, Second Home. We are looking for a re resolution to suspend and pass. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first, I ask for suspension. We have a motion to suspend the rules. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion to second to suspend the rules. Under discussion. There is no discussion. Anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? The rules are suspended. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for the uh, ordinance, the resolution, excuse me, be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Abstain? Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Uh, next we will take 5-26. Uh, uh, which I had gone over before, 526 by the Assistant City Attorney submitting a memo in support of the recommendations of the Law and Licensing Committee in the matter of the quasi-judicial hearing to determine whether or not to renew Class B alcohol beverage license number 1808 held by Second Home LLC. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I ask that the uh, report of officer be uh, accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. Under discussion. Your Honor, under discussion. Um, we have in front of us a document from the Assistant City Attorney uh, giving a report to the full common council on um, the action taken and a quasi judicial hearing regarding the sec license for second home. Uh, later on, we have a response. Uh, it is uh, 5-79. Um, uh, from the second home, Anthony Kruger agents uh, on their side of the issue. Uh, historically, we do not debate uh, the findings of facts. The findings of facts are stated uh, in the two reports here uh, for the council to peruse and make a decision based on that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Okay. Okay, next we will take 5-79. Uh, I can find 579. 5 579, an RO by the city clerk submitting an objection to the Law and Licensing Committee report regarding the non-renewal of Class B alcohol beverage license for second home. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. Under discussion? Under discussion. Uh, this is the second portion of that. Uh, this is the response from the interested party uh, on the committee's recommendation to... Um, not renew the license. Okay, we have a motion to accept and file. Any further discussion? Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. 
We need roll call on that or? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Okay. Uh, and last, we have 5-69. Five sixty nine by law and licensing recommending that the council not renew the Class B alcohol beverage license number eighteen oh eight held by Second Home under discussion. Or may we have a motion? Motion. Uh, uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion to accept and adopt under discussion. Alderman Flesh. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion. Um, the uh, two previous reports uh, the, that the council has a chance to review. Um, uh, sort of sums up the uh, the two sides that the committee, um, um, law licensing committee, under its, its function as a quasi judicial hearing, examined. Um, really, two uh, findings of fact came from this, uh, and um, because one finding of fact is still being um, um, debated in courts, the uh, council, the committee, did not examine that, and that would be the uh, uh, criminal activity that uh, supposedly occurred on that property. Um, however, we did just look at the uh, finding of fact um, uh, that um, uh, uh, Anthony Kruger had violated Chapter 125 municipal regulations uh, under A, B, and C, uh, under 569. You can see that uh, as enough finding reasons to uh, not renew the license. Um, the committees decided uh, under the information that upon the annual renewal for, for taverns, uh, it is... Um, uh, preferred to not renew than it would be to try to take a license away at a later date, um, which is a far more difficult process and a far more expensive process to the city uh, to, in terms of hiring uh, legal um, representation and so on. Uh, did I get all that correct, <laughs> City Attorney Adams? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's just one, one item on this. Uh, I believe, it's my understanding from Assistant City Attorney Adams, that the committee did not require that uh, objections from uh, the the license holder uh, be in writing, and uh, it's my understanding that, that an individual might be in, present in the uh, council chambers tonight, and I would suggest that you uh, provide them the opportunity to present whatever they might have to say an objection uh, orally tonight. Okay, so we do have a written document, but um, my understanding is since it wasn't, the committee did not officially require a written only written document, that it's probably best at this time then to allow uh, a verbal. Okay. Um, I guess Could I'll the make individual that. have anything to. Okay. I must make that motion to open the floor then to Anthony Kruger. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor to Mr. Kruger if you'd like to speak, Mr. Kruger. If I could also uh, attorney like McLean. To, uh, request that uh, Attorney Volkner uh, come come up to the uh, the table here. Uh, attorney Volkner is representing the council in this matter. Uh, our office is prosecuting the case, and uh, as you passed uh, a bit belatedly a minute ago, the. Uh, the item to authorize outside counsel in this matter. Attorney Volkner is representing the council in this matter, so I'll turn it over to him if he's got any, uh, if got any questions of him or if he's got any advice to the council. Thanks. Thanks. Very good. Uh, Mr. Kruger, the floor is yours. Anthony, if you want to pull the mic up just so everybody can hear you too and make sure everybody hears you. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say uh, that uh, I was never given any notice, warnings, or tickets on any of the following. Um, I do have my invoices here and uh, open for viewing uh, that they are all up to date and organized. And they were on the, on the evening in question. Um, I was not given any evidence at uh, 
at uh, Lawton Committee uh, hearing. They say we had bottles of liquor not purchased from a wholesaler, but rather for a retailer and resold. That is untrue. Uh, as to the bottles being improperly disposed of, well, everybody is trained to this face or smash bottles and garbage. Um, at this time, I feel it would be wrong to take my license or not renew my license at this time. Um, also, the last finding of facts that I received Jan on June 4th are, I believe, are to have errors in them. I don't believe that uh, trans uh, actions of uh, Sergeant Douglas Tunison was a re routine inspection on February 8th. Uh, I also have, it states in here, uncleanly bar. I have health department records that go against that fact. Uh, and it also says that I wanted a delay in, in uh, the hearing till after any criminal matters might be, that might have later, and that was untrue. I just wanted it delayed to have my lawyer present. Um, so at this point, I, I feel it would be wrong. To okay, thank you, Mr. Kruger. License. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Kruger? Mm -hmm. Vice President Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you. It says, in addition, it appears the committee held its hearing on June 10th, 2008, when considering my license renewal, I was not made aware of that meeting, let alone being present. Can somebody tell us what the story? I mean, he was not present or wasn't made known. Does Alderman can Rinfleisch, explain you are the chairman of the committee. Thank you. Um, sorry, what was the, the, the comment here? Alderman Kittleson, what's the question? The question was, he wasn't made aware that there was a meeting. Which meeting? Well, it says right here, the committee held its hearing on June 10th. When considering my license renewal, he said he was not made aware of that meeting and he was not present. Was he not present? He was any? not present as he was not able to be present. Okay. Uh, the meeting was rescheduled then to later dates that he could be present. And he was not present? He was present at the, at the second meeting. Present. Yes, he was present. Yes, he was. Okay. And it's the finding so of the fact. So he did have a chance to yes. tell his story? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The date on there was June 10th, 2008. June 10th, 2008. Yeah. That's, that's the paper they gave me. Um, the um, document did not come out of my hand. It came out of the attorney's office. Uh, I can only assume that's a typo, uh, the date on 2008 versus 2010. Um, the matter is clear, though, that we had had a quasi-judicial hearing where uh, the prosecution presented his case, and uh, Anthony Kruger did defend. He was present at that time. Okay. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Alderman Rindfleisch. Any further questions for Mr. Kruger? There's no questions. There are none? Just comment. Thank you, Mr. Kruger. <coughs> Alderman Rindfleisch. I have no questions at this time uh, for Anthony Kruger. Um, we did hear it in the committee. Um, 
you know, both sides of the issue. I think if you look back at the uh, Assistant State Attorney's report, um, there's two things, you know, that, that really two main witnesses that we had heard. Uh, the first witness is Sergeant Tunison, um, who had listed, um, and I had stopped at eight points uh, of things that was found on the bar inspection at 6.30 p.m. on February 8th, um, which led us to um, the points A, B, and C uh, up above uh, for reasons why not to renew the license. We did also hear from, um, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Detective Hatch, I believe is his is, is position, uh, with the Sheriff MEG, MEG unit, um, and gave statements uh, regarding September 6, 2009, uh, tip from Crime Stoppers, um, uh, which eventually led to arrests on the premise there uh, for the possession of, um, I don't have, don't have all the details written down, but um, um, for illegal uh, drugs and tr a drug transaction. That is the following A and B. Um, well, we did hear the statements on that. The purpose of the committee is to find findings of fact and to make judgments based on the findings of fact. Um, while the um, uh, detective um, gave a very strong case finding of fact of what happened on September 6th, uh, we felt that because Anthony Curry was under um, direction from his attorney not to speak on such issue because of that criminal, that criminal charge is still pending or it's still in the process. Um, but be aware that uh, we did hear evidence regarding that issue as well at a point in time. What am I doing? <laughs> doing just fine. Okay. Um, so uh, in summary, um, we do have the, the uh, two reports. Um, I think it's, it's pretty clear that uh, there are two different sides of the story. Um, and uh, the committee's role in this case is to uh, not to find guilt, but to find a fact, if you will. And based on the facts that we discovered, um, that uh, it was the committee's unanimous recommendation to not renew the license. Thank you, Alderman Rinflesh. <coughs> President Kisha. Thank you. If I could ask a question, Counselor. A couple of times in Mr. Kruger's letter, document number 579, he notes um, they didn't receive any warnings or written or otherwise uh, pertaining to some of these problems. Does that have any bearing at all in, uh, in what we're talking about here? Uh, Alderman, no. Uh, notice is not a necessary uh, element, if you will, of, of your consideration. Notice is, um, uh, it appears what Mr. Krieger is arguing is that he just didn't know about any of this in advance of, of having the police visit his establishment and discover these things. That is not a necessary element of anything we're talking about here today in the context of, of what the police discovered. So as far as uh, precedent regarding uh, warnings written or otherwise, uh, it's not necessary or, uh, I'm looking for precedent of, of future litigation. L let me provide you with an analogy. Um, for example, if you are speeding in your automobile, um, an officer has a discretionary decision as to whether to issue you a warning at that particular time or whether to issue you a ticket for speeding at that time. Right. Uh, the analysis is much the same here. Um, the officer is not required to provide Mr. Kruger with a warning at that point uh, he may choose at that point, depending on what he may find, uh, to issue a citation or, or, or warning, depending on what he believes. If I may, Your Honor, in follow-up with that, normally in that case, an officer would take the degree of my speeding, the degree of my recklessness, of, and, and I would think he would factor that in in his professional opinion. Was such a, um, an opinion given by the officer in this case? I, I don't believe there was any such opinion given with the, as to the nature and extent outside of the facts that he reported his own personal observations. He did not provide an opinion as to the, I guess what I would describe as egregiousness of what he may have seen. So the, uh, could I infer from that that his opinion was and is that uh, this existed, this happened this way, and it was enough for him? Correct. Is that in layman's terms enough to clear? <clears throat> I won't speculate or provide my summarization of what the officer may have thought, but that inference is probably fair. Thank you. Thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Redflesh. Thank you. Um, the issue in front of us is a difficult one. Um, and I, I don't think there's going to be a vote that I'm going to take the rest of however long I'm in council that's going to be more difficult because. It is a business, and let's be very real that when you vote to not renew a license, that, that business is going to go out of business. Uh, and there's people involved, there's families involved with that. 
Um, I don't take that lightly. Um, it's not my goal here to put people out of business. Um, but I think that the, the weight of the finding of facts, the weight of the two witnesses that we had found uh, are very strong, and I uh, uh, urge you to uh, uphold the decision of the committee, which was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinflesh. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Abstain. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you. Uh, 5 28, nope, oh, let's go back here. 527 by the Redevelopment Authority recommending approving the sale of Redevelopment Authority owned property to the south of Hygiene Fabrics 1301 Erie Avenue. If I may explain, this is the property that is being sold in relationship in, in uh, conjunction with purchasing the prop property on, uh, on uh, uh, 10th and Erie. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Abstain. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 5-28 uh, through 5-51 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 5-52 by Alderman Gisha, awarding the sale of $2,045,000 general obligation promissory note series 2010A. President Gisha. Previously dealt with, Your Honor. Oh, it has been, that's right. 552 and 553. I guess we only want to issue those once, right? Please. Good. <laughs> Okay, let's try this one. 5-54 by Alderman Gisha, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute amendment number one to tourism promotion and development agreement with Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce Incorporated. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the resolution be accepted and adopted. Uh, we need a suspension of the rules on this, I believe. Pardon me, I apologize. I'm asking for suspension of the rules on 554. Second. We have a motion and a second on suspension of the rules. Alderman Rinfleisch, would you like an explanation? No, I'm fine. Okay, great. I've got one, just in case. <laughs> uh, is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Then I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 5 55 by Alderman Gisha, accepting $654,000 in federal funds from the Department of Commerce Community Development Block Grant Emergency Assist. Assistance Program, also known as the CDBG-EAP, to be used for designated storm sewer and road reconstruction projects. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Your Honor, it's always nice to receive money, um, uh, although this money is that we're getting is federal money, so it's spread out amongst all taxpayers, and it is taxpayer money across the country. Um, we set aside roughly $200,000 for mini storm sewers out of the capital improvement budget this year. I think everybody on the committee felt that wasn't enough. Average cost between $25,000 and $75,000 for a mini storm, not including the road replacement and stuff. It doesn't go very far. Um, uh, I'd like to commend our development office, uh, particularly Chad Pelichek, who is uh, uh, deeply involved with this. 
uh, in applying for these emergency assistance funds. This then will leverage our 200,000 into $854,000 in uh, mini storm sewer work. Thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, approximately how many mini storm sewers can we take care of for that roughly 850,000? I mean, it was a sizable list. Uh, uh, it would I, be, it would be a, a, a definitely a ballpark estimate. Uh, uh, this this that, will allow Alderman Bourne actually to walk down some of the streets again <laughs> to take care of this. This is, uh, this is excellent, so thank you. I would say that the department has a prioritized list from last year, uh, and it is an extensive list, and they will utilize all those dollars to make it down that list, and the item you note was a highly prioritized item. Um, actually, on that number, uh, Chad Pelashek can answer that if you'd like. We have a motion to open up the microphone to. Please so do. Move. Second. second. Motion to second. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Uh, actually, that is not being used for many storms. <laughs> oh, In the document <laughs> that's attached to it, it's being used for continuation of the 5th in New York project. I apologize. Storm sewer. Last year, the, the Commerce Grant funded 402,000 of storm sewer improvements on North 6th Street. This will be funding some extensions off of that on Wisconsin Avenue, New York Avenue. So it's a blend of CDBG entitlement and EAP dollars to continue expanding out of the 5th in New York storm sewer project. If I could ask him a question. So, so you're saying that you're going to close the street again when I just was able to drive down it? Probably. Okay, great. Your Honor, if I can clarify, Chad, it is for storm sewer projects, just not mini storm sewers. That's correct. Right. Sorry. Sorry for the mini put in. That's right. Big storm sewers. Big ones. Big ones. <laughs> Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 5 56 by Alderman Hanna lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire four firefighter paramedics. Uh, Mayor, three person hold, please. Three man hold, I guess is the correct term. Three man hold, we have one. <laughs> I need to have who it is, please. Looks like we got a four-man hold going. Really? <laughs> Would anybody like to back out of the three-man hold? Okay. Just, just hold on. It's Bowers. We now have a three-man hold. Uh, we have uh, Alderman Boren, Alderman Bauk, and Alderman Bowers uh, on a three-man hold. There is no further discussion on the subject. It is done for the evening. Got that? Oops. It would be Boren, Bauk, and Bowers. Boren, Bauk, and Bowers, correct. Got it. Okay, next. 5-57 by Alderperson Kittleson authorizing the city to enter into contract for providing Sheboygan Transit short-term disability insurance coverage. Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I would ask to suspend the rules, I believe, mm -hmm. on this first. Could we have a motion to a motion suspend. To Do we have a second? Second. Second. Motion okay. and a second to suspend the rules. And, um, uh, under discussion? Under discussion, I think that there's some time here that we need to get this going. So that, that would be the reason for suspending. Okay. Under the rules. discussion on suspension of the rules. Alderman Bowers, uh, only on suspension of the rules. Would oh. you like to speak on that? No. Okay. Then Alderman, I would make Alderman Hammond on suspension of the rules. Are you beeped in, or is this Alderman Bourne? Not, it's on this on this document. Okay. But not the Very suspension. good. It still says Clyunis on my list here, so I didn't know which one of you it was. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, I'd ask uh, Director Rice. Is he still here? Or Actually, Ron McDonald could come up and speak on this for us as well. Uh, Director of Transit, Ron McDonald, will speak on this issue. Thank you.
Thank you. <clears throat> this is uh, for short-term disability policy for the transit department. Uh, the transit department does not issue sick leave to its employees. Instead, we have a short-term disability policy that uh, basically the first three days of being sick is on the employee's nickel, and then the fourth day and beyond, it's paid at two-thirds of their wages. Uh, what We've had this in place long before my time here, and what we've done is, uh, through the assistance of uh, uh, Mr. Rice, we got a quote for a new insurance policy, and we're going to be experiencing about a 54% savings annually on our premium by going to this policy. Uh, thank you. Any questions for Director McDonald? No. Alderman Bourne? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> Uh, Ron, is there, was there any effort to, to uh, have a, an employee uh, premium share on this? Is the city responsible for the full premium or is, is this a negotiated item with the contract that they don't pay premiums or was there an effort made to have the employees pay part of this premium? This is a, a premium that's paid in lieu of sick leave uh, so that the employee does not contribute but it's, it's far cheaper than if we gave sick leave like everybody else does in the city. Uh, annually, it's gonna cost us about $15,000 for sick leave and for the entire department uh, of the unionized folks. So um, it, it, it's a better, much better deal for us in providing the, the typical sick leave benefit. <coughs> Thank you. President Kisha. Uh, just a uh, clerical question. Um, Ron, that's great stuff. Thank you. Uh, and there's no, Fife form attached to this, unless I'm missing it somewhere, which would have explained to all aldermen before the meeting. I'm not picking on you, Gene. Yeah. It's just yeah. uh, kind of an illustration. We would have understood this was half the amount, the savings of 54%. Mm -hmm. We would have understood this was in the budget, and and the public would, more important, the rest of us, the public would have understood that this is a great thing, and and would have had these questions answered prior to it. Not a pick okay. on, I've, uh, I've hey. missed them too, yep. so I'm not uh, calling the kettle a different color right. here. It's just a good time to illustrate that point. Well, the Kittleson. <laughs> if I could just make a last comment. I, I think part of the problem was we were hoping to get this done uh, for the June premium. Uh, it, it would have been under the $15,000 threshold, but as we got closer to it, uh, we looked at it and they missed a few things on the policy and put it over the $15,000 mark by I think it was $15, which caused it to have to come to council. So we're under the gun and it just that's why it occurred. It happens. It wasn't trying to withhold Certainly. information. And the moral of the story is don't forget the fife. That's correct. Right? Okay. Any further discussion? Thank you, Ron. Uh, Alderman Bowers, did you have a question? Yes. Thank you. Just one question. Uh, when we're trying to reduce expenses and we're asking employees to pay part, uh, was that ever brought up to them at all, paying part of the premium? That was not negotiated as part of their contract, but we are reducing our, our cost by 54% by going to this policy. So the, the cost is 54% less than uh, by buying a policy and then giving them the... This, this is costing 54% less than the former policy. Oh, you've had a policy before? It's been in place for years. Yes, this is just renewing the policy because there's a soft insurance market and for a lot of reasons we're able to put out and get a new policy that's gonna save us about 54% per year by going to this new policy. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. President Kisha? Yeah, only because it was brought up twice, some clarification might be necessary as to whether they went back to the employees and asked for it. Under the state of Wisconsin's collective bargaining rules, mediation, arbitration, right on down the line. As a member of the bargaining team for last year, you learn a lot. And you can't just say, you can't even actually, well, let's just face it, it's a fantasy. It would never happen unless it happens once a year in that bargaining table. That's why that bargaining time is critical and highly important. So I would encourage all aldermen uh, to be involved with the bargaining process if they so choose. Uh, because uh, you will learn real quickly what you can and can't do. And this is one of those can't do's. Okay, any further questions? Further comment? Thank you, Ron. If there is no uh, further comment, roll call please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bo Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? 
Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 5 58 by Alderman Rinflesh, authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special, didn't we? No, special outside legal counsel regarding the suspension revocation of beverage operators license number 8215. This is a different one. Alderman Rinflesh. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, again, I need to ask for suspension. Second. We have a motion to suspend second. the rules. Do we have, we have a motion and a second under discussion? There's no discussion. Is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? They are suspended. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, next, I ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the re resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. President Gisha? Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but this would be another example where the question <laughs> is, what's in the budget, what's left over in the budget, and, uh, and the expenditure of funds where a financial information form would be helpful to the public and to the council. Don't forget the fife. Thank you. Okay. Uh, five dash sixty lies over. Five dash sixty one through five dash sixty seven to be referred. Five dash sixty eight uh, report of committee six to be referred. Report of committee seven. Five dash seventy by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab drivers license number 8546 based upon the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, thank you. Uh, is Doris Fry here? She is here, Your Honor. Um, uh, I believe uh, the last meeting, which I did miss due to the uh, birth of my daughter, um, that uh, Ms. Fry had asked for another meeting after missing two meetings at, at the uh, Law and Licensing Committee. Uh, at the last meeting, um, she was given the chance to appear. Uh, she did not appear. So once again, our recommendation is to deny the license based on the failure to cooperate with the committee. Uh, it's been three times already. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, Ms. Fry, would you like to speak? You have a Motion to open the floor, I believe. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Please. Um, all I can say is that I didn't get the notice that there was a meeting, that I was supposed to be at the meeting until the day after when I got a brown slip in the mail saying that I needed to pick up a certified letter at the post office. Um, I did call and the city attorney did tell me that there was one mail to my house, but I never received it. I mean, I live on 10th and, between 10th and 11th and Erie and there has been problems with people stealing mail. I don't know if that's what happened or what, but I mean, I really need my taxi license. I mean, that is the only job that I have to support my, my child. I don't have a spouse to help me. Okay. Um, Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Alderman Rinfleisch, other than the uh, failure to cooperate with the committee, failure to appear, was there anything on, on this woman's uh, record that you got from Attorney Adams that would indicate that you would have not granted the license, you know, on any violations that were related to the license activity? Thank you. I'll remember inflation. Um, the report would, uh, uh, we get from Attorney Adams, um, would be uh, based on uh, probably some, um, the fact she didn't list some kind of conviction uh, that we had questions about. Um, the problem is, is that we don't have the chance to ask about that in that, in that setting when they don't attend the meeting. Uh, we hold that committee very seriously. Uh, it is not a very big, there isn't a lot of public involved. People can open up and talk with us about um, you know, the, the reasons why, and we can make recommendations uh, why to do so. But this time, um, you know, it would be as if we were going to all you know, committee items and bring it to the full council. I, I would ask you not to, uh, to even uh, you know, 
really look at that, this issue right now. If you want to send it back, send it back. We'll give her a fourth time if you really want to. The point being, though, is if it's that important to her for this as a career, um, three chances to make the meeting is something that we, we see very strongly that, that you know, we need to be able to ask the important questions and we need to be able to get those answers up front uh, so that we can make a recommendation. We, we don't have that right now. Thank you, Alderman Ryan Fleisch. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I will make a motion to refer this back to the committee again, but Alderman Rinfleisch, do you have the date and the time of your next meetings that you can give this woman tonight? She'll probably still be noticed by certified mail, I believe, uh, Attorney McLean, but if you have the date and the time that this woman could write this down tonight, uh, in the event I'll that second it, In the motion. event that that happens, that the, the mail doesn't come through again, you're duly noticed tonight, then if right. Alderman Rinfleisch can give you the date and the time and the location of the meeting, please. Thank you. Next um, Tuesday, June 15th, five o'clock at the police station. On North 23rd. On North 23rd. Do you want me to write that down? Sure. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to send this back to the Law and Licensing Committee. Any further discussion? No further discussion, Your Honor. Um, I understand the, the need uh, to, uh, um, because it's so important to her for a career, to send it back. Uh, I worry, though, that the precedent's being set. We gave one opportunity. If somebody down the road has probably more severe items, uh, chooses not to cooperate with the committee, we're going to keep egging this on. We're going to have more and more, uh, in my mind, we're going to have more and more candidates, applicants coming back. Uh, seeking delay. Um, so I ask you not to support the motion. Um, I think three times has been enough. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Alderman Rindfleisch. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't get a vote on this matter unless it's a tie anyway, but I, I believe Ms. Fry that she didn't get, the, uh, didn't get the notices. I think she's believable there. Any further discussion? Thank you, Ms. Fry. There is no further discussion. Uh, the vote is to send it. Back. Motion is to refer back to law and licensing, and Motion I is. vote would be to send back. Roll Rat call, please. Radke. An I vote will send it back to committee. To law and licensing. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wonkaman. No. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. We'll return to Law and Licensing Committee. Ms. Is Ms. Fry still here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Alderman Rinflush, it's Tuesday, June 15th at 5 p.m. at the police station Correct. on North 23rd. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, that was 5-70. We are on to 571 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license number 8566 based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions, record of violations related to the license activity, and record as an habitual <coughs> violator. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion is William Murphy here. He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. All right, based on, uh, as the note says, uh, the uh, hi habitual violator, uh, the history was long. Um, he was uh, given two chances to appear uh, <coughs> by certified mail. He did not uh, appear. Uh, it is our unanimous recommendation to uh, deny the license. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion <coughs> and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Committees 8, 5-72 by Finance, recommending authorizing entering into an agreement for Human Resources and Labor Relations Consulting Services with HR Unlimited, LLC, and passing the attached resolution with the amended agreement. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. I'd like to scold myself this time, Your Honor, uh, <laughs> regarding an incomplete FIFO. Oh. Hmm. Learning experience for me. You'll see on the back page you have the financial forum discussing where this money is coming from and what it uh, what is left. It shows the amount budgeted for the current year is zero. Uh, uh, the amount budgeted for the current year is seventy-five thousand dollars plus benefits. 
So you can, as rule of thumb, add about 50% more onto that. Uh, in this case, we are paying the equivalency of just the $75,000 uh, for the services of Mr. Rice. As you can read through the contract, we both have the ability to make changes in this contract as far as extending, not extending, um, as we see fit. But it's important for the public and the council to know that this saves us roughly half, or about $32,000, uh, going about it this way. And we've been very happy with the services of Mr. Rice. I agree. <coughs> Any further discussion? Did we have a second? Bill the fife. Yeah. Fill out the fight. Who seconded the I motion. scolded myself. Do we have a motion and a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? I'm sorry, Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. <laughs> Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 5 73 by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establish revenue and appropriations for thermal imaging camera contribution for community policing, funds from state for police, from state for <coughs> police training, and funds received for police street crimes unit. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. No fight form needed. It's money coming in. <laughs> Not going out. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there is no discussion, roll call, please. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Vi Vanderweel? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 5-74 by salaries and grievances, recommending lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a finance director slash treasurer. Alderman Hanna. Salary and grievances, isn't that your committee? That's Alderman Gish to put it in. No, I did not. Mm -mm. Did I? <laughs> yes, I did. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Still your committee. You sure you don't want to sponsor it? No? Okay. Yeah. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. He can share his FIFE form with us. There is no FIFE form necessary at this time because there's no established uh, hey. financial right. uh, draw. So I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Just so everybody's clear, uh, the, the, uh, our finance director, treasurer, uh, has, uh, has moved to the county. We had a big thank you for him. And uh, this opens the ability for us to actually post for this position. At that time, I believe salary and grievance will be reviewing the job description and, uh, and the table of organization regarding it. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10. 5 75 lies over. 5 76 through 5 78 to be referred. Uh, matters laid over 11. 4 42. General Ordinance number 20 10 11 by Alderman Hanna, Gisha, Vanderweel, and Versi reestablishing the salary schedule for a certain <coughs> designated elected official also known as the Municipal Court Judge. Alderman Hanna, would you like this one? I'd be delighted to take this one. Nope. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Alderman Hanna, could you explain what the process was for offering the Municipal Court Judge a raise? Was any of this based on performance of the Municipal Court or was it just time to consider giving her a raise? Alderman excellent, Hanna. Excellent question. Uh, some of that was taken into consideration. Uh, most of what we did was compare with other cities, like size, similar positions, and we went on the low, very low end of the range. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Bout. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And th that document's missing from my pack. Can you just remind me of what the uh, what the numbers are going from what and unto what? I did not bring my notes with me. Did you, did you get one? Going from, oh. Did you get one? 37 and 11. So what's she making now? Anybody know? She's going to be flat next year, modest increase, modest increase. Okay. Thank you. Flat, modest, and modest. That answers your question? Well, Very it's good. a lot for a part-time role, but we'll keep paying it. Thank you, Alderman Polk. Alderman Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, scuttlebutt here in the back side of the room here is that we didn't actually get this document in our packets. So there's several of us that aren't participating in the debate because we have no idea. Don't have it. It's looking in. It was in. So, it's true. It's, you know. <laughs> it, Julie, is this the one that you found on the back? Of one of the documents early in the evening, I wonder. Yes, that, yes. That could that be. Was, that was I think you have it, but it got stapled to something else. Why don't we make a motion to hold? Yeah. Can't so everybody can the read the document and we can deal with it. Uh, there is, I know, a but time frame of what, document. six months? Mm -hmm. No, it's got to be 13 months, I believe. 13, 13 months, months prior right. to that election, and she's up for election and next year. time frame? As soon as we can get rid of the time frame, we can. Do we have time to wait for the next council meeting? Folks really should be able to review the document. Or you can search through your pile and find it on which one it's stapled to the back of. <laughs> we can do that. Fair. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Alderman Bob. And uh, thank you, Chairman Hanna, for that offer. Uh, hearing the, the it's flat, modest. modest, and modest is good enough for me. You don't need to hold it for me. I don't know how the rest of the group right. feels. I just push it forward. We had a, a motion to hold, but no second. Withdraw your motion. So my motion to uh, <clears throat> my motion to Approve. to move the ordinance and put it upon its passage stands. So we have, still have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Any further discussion? Alderman Boren? No. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 16 ayes. And the clerk's office apologizes. Motion carries. Um, other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. 5 80 is submitting communication from various property owners on North Taylor Drive stating that North Taylor Drive from North Avenue to the cul de sac at the end of North Taylor Drive, stating that this street is in very poor condition with many multiple patched potholes. That will be referred to City Planning and Public Works. 581 is an RO by the Director of Public Works uh, regarding. <clears throat> The uh, proposed resolution allowing the Public Works Director and Police Chief to conduct light vehicle maintenance at the police vehicle garage in order to best utilize existing personnel. It will also be referred to Public Works. 582 is the resolution authorizing the Public Works Director and Police Chief the discretion to carry out light vehicle maintenance at the Police Department's vehicle storage garage. Public Works. 583 is a communication from Linda Emery, Property Manager of Piggly Wiggly Northwest requesting permission to install a mailbox and appropriate reserved or no parking signage in a designated area directly in front of their offices at 2215 Union Avenue, which will be devoted to U.S. Postal Service trucks only. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 584 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. Law and licensing. 585 is also an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011. Law and licensing. 586 is a communication from the Greater Sheboygan Committee with the subject matter being Sheboygan Fire Department issues and answers. Will be referred to the Committee of the Whole, the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee and Public Protection and Safety. 587 is a communication from Catherine Dufour sending the rationale for the waiter crossing signs on South 8th Street. That will be referred to public protection and safety. <laughs> and it's actually a pretty cool sign. We have a motion to adjourn. So be it. So moved. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye. Eric. Aye. Eric.